So I've been fortunate enough to come across another great lecture by Mark Rudolph. This time it's about female nature, especially for those men who are interested to know whether they should or should not spend money on women. Mark Rudolph will cover specifics such as taking women out on dinners, paying for them and why you shouldn't do it in this day and age. This seminar is titled, Will She Buy You Dinner? I think we should all appreciate what Mark Rudolph has done in the past for all men out there. I wish to say thanks to the man himself and hope you enjoyed the next presentation. According to Mark, plenty of men and women are still suffering from indigestion over who picks up the dinner check. He's done plenty of radio shows around the world on this topic and he labels as prostitutes right on the air all female callers who feel entitled to be wined and dined. Recently, Mark conducted a whining dining poll on his website to quantify how men and women feel about this touchy topic. The results of this poll became the basis for his article, Her Double D's Will Bankrupt You. He will tell you more about this tonight. Please help me welcome Mark Rudolph. It's interesting that we're here at all discussing something that should be trivial and a given, meaning that men and women would reciprocate easily, willingly with each other. But in fact, it isn't true. Uh, anecdotally, and through my own dating experience, through friends over the years, I've heard story after story about women who refuse to buy men dinner, uh, men who do not want women to buy them dinner, on serious satellite radio a couple of weeks ago. And a woman called in. She With called, Howard Stern. No. I wish, I wish it had been, but it wasn't. It was on the Maxim channel, though. That's pretty good. Uh -huh. And a woman heard this topic, and she called me an idiot. And she said, and I quote, If this man doesn't buy it, he's not getting any punani. <laughs> and, of course, I called her a prostitute. <laughs> and I, so I explained to her that, you know, this is the kind of transaction you have in a whorehouse money for sex. Category number one is the man who likes it when a woman buys him dinner and is pleased to be her guest. That's me. Okay? Category number two, now see the thing is, is that 80 percent of the men said they like women to buy them dinner, but I know that they don't all follow through on it. So that's why I have category number two. The man who secretly wishes a woman would buy him dinner is afraid to verbalize the topic and relents to pay when the waiter brings the check. And this kind of reminds me of Wayne's world. Remember Wayne and Garth who would say, we're not worthy? We're not worthy. That, that's that guy. He, he really wants it, but he's afraid to say, hey, baby, it's your turn. And the reason he's afraid is because he's afraid he won't get laid. <laughs> Number three, the man who doesn't like it when a woman buys him dinner because he believes that paying preserves his manhood. That's kind of like the, the Frank Callahan character of Clint Eastwood. He pulls out his credit card and he says, go ahead, make me pay. <laughs> now, chivalry is something I define as BS, benevolent sexism. It's condescension with a smile. So a lot of women think that, that if they're put up on pedestals, that's actually a sign of respect. It isn't. It's actually demeaning. It's a sign of disrespect. It's counterintuitive. If you have a relationship between a man and a woman where there's no reciprocation or people feel entitled, you don't really have a relationship. What is, this, what is the difference between a man and a woman? For, let, me make something, let, me make, make, let me make something else clear. I do not think a woman is a man wearing a dress. Okay. What? I'm sorry. I do not think a woman is a man in a dress, except in certain parts of San Francisco. But I, I don't think that they are biologically and physiologically identical. I never said that. I just said that they're equal in their capacities, they're equal in their rights. Okay. And, and here's the thing, here's the problem I have with feminism. Like a lot, like, it's like the ACLU, started off on the right track, went off the planet. What happened True with enough. feminism is that it started off on the right track mm -hmm. saying that women need equality. Totally agree with that. But now feminism is into trashing men. If you look at the websites of NOW, National Organization for Women, 
Amnesty International, trash men left and right. Doesn't do anybody any good. It's, hmm. In fact, it's a disservice to women. Every relationship has two termination points. The first one is dating. That's the beginning termination point. Now, if two people get married, the happy ending, not the happy ending in a massage parlor, but the happy ending for a marriage, <laughs> is that people grow old and eventually they die, but they've been married their whole lives. That's, that's the best happy ending you can have for a marriage. But 50% of marriages end in divorce. Worse than that, women bring 70% of divorces. And the biggest reason is to steal the children, to take custody of the children. So that's what that yellow arrow is. So that means the termination point, and this has been well documented, this is not my opinion. Um, so the termination point of the marriage is the other D, divorce. My contention is that the economic behavior in dating will be mirrored in divorce. So if a man meets a woman who refuses to reciprocate, refuses to be financially generous, she's basically showing him right now what it's going to be like when they get divorced, which means she will clean his clock. I can't tell you how many women I've talked to who say, I'm sorry, I just want to be wined and dined. Why? Because it makes me feel special. And I say, that's great. Who doesn't want to feel special? You think women have a monopoly on that? A woman will invite a guy out to dinner. That means he's the guest. The check comes. He grabs it from her and says, I'll have none of that. You're not going to pay for me. And women have called me. They've written to me. They said, what should I do? They said, the guy is not your father, and he's not your boss. He does not have the right to tell you you can't pay. The way you present yourself dictates the kind of people you'll attract. I don't, for every part of life, that's true. If I want to go protest in the streets of San Francisco, uh, there are plenty of people who will protest with me. I don't. But if I did, it's because birds of a feather flock together. So if I want to play tennis, I go hang out at the tennis courts. If I want to play squash, I go to the squash courts. If I want women who treat me fairly, I say, this is who I am, and if you don't like it, hit the road. When women get into their 40s, they realize that the way they've been trained, which is to expect whining and dining, it gets them dates, it doesn't get them respect. If, I'm, if I meet somebody and she has an attitude of entitlement, if she has, has the audacity to expect anything from me simply because she's a woman, she's eliminated immediately. The only thing stopping you from achieving what you want in life is you. Mm -hmm. Everything is out there. All the resources are out there. So I don't want to hear the excuses. I bear your children. I mean, you don't give childbirth. You don't have a period. You talk about PMS. If a woman walks into a boardroom, you have no idea what it's like to bleed for five days. You would be out of your freaking mind if you bled. <laughs> I, was, I was in a bar talking to a woman. And uh, so she said, let me understand something. If we go on a vacation, you expect me to pay my way? I said, yes. She said, well, then you're not getting any sex. I said, let me ask you something. If you go on a vacation by yourself, do you pay? Yes. If you go on a vacation with your girlfriend, do you pay? Yes. If you go on a vacation with a girlfriend who earns more than you do, do you pay? Yes. I said, son, how come all of a sudden when a cock is involved, you're poor? <laughs> and you know what she said? Because a cock is involved. That's what she said to me. And I said, well, then you're a prostitute. I think I don't believe in judging people and calling them prostitute, number one. I'm totally offended. All I said was, and I want you to understand this point, a woman who feels entitled to be wined and dined because she's a woman, so in who is in essence trading sex for money, is a prostitute. That's what prostitutes do. And there are women who don't say, I'll pay half, I'll pay my own way. They say, I'm not paying anything. And that's what I'm talking about. If I invite you out to dinner, I'm going to pay because you're my guest. Because I think it's important that you don't take what I say and take it out of context. There's a woman who's paid for sex. Right. They're giving sex to a man for money. Right. That's a different thing. No, than that's exactly what I'm talking about. For a gift. 
of dinner because you're attracted to somebody. It's a romantic feeling you're having with them. You're taking then, what I said out of context, and I'm not going to allow you to do that. What okay. I said was, if I invite a woman out to dinner, I'm going to pay because she's my guest. If she feels entitled to that because she's a female, so after the date, her attitude is, thank you very much, I had a wonderful time, where are you taking me next time? That's an attitude of entitlement. Then, all relationships are going to be sexual. So essentially, she's getting all of the financial goodies in return for sex. If she doesn't have an attitude of re reciprocity, then she is a prostitute. And my point, do you understand my point that if there's reciprocity, there's no problem? Mm -hmm. There's no problem if there's reciprocity. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the cases where women refuse to reciprocate because they don't think they have to. Mm -hmm. Please understand that point. That's the essence of what I'm discussing okay. here tonight. There are women like that who say, I don't have to pay. I'm a woman. That's what I'm talking about. It's the sense of entitlement. But the, the, that's right. The sense of entitlement, and there are guys who think that they have to go along with it because they think it's the only choice they have. What I'm saying is they don't have to go along with it. They have other choices. They can just tell those women, bye-bye. Okay. One of the reasons I wrote the book is because I saw all these changes in the world, especially in the workplace. But in the social scene, they had not changed. And I decided that somebody needed to write new rules, and why shouldn't it be me? Th because when, yeah, when, people don't, when people don't know what to do, they rely on their programming. And the programming doesn't make any sense. I mean, a woman could be your boss at work, and yet in a bar she would expect you to buy her a drink. It doesn't make any sense. I'm entitled. We go on a vacation. I'm a girl. I'm going to give you sex. You have to take me. She even said to my face, if you don't pay for my vacation, you get no sex. Highest compliment a man can pay a woman mm -hmm. is to treat her like a peer. Right. But then, don't you think that women are totally different than men? No, I don't. Wait. I really don't. Well, you asked me. Well, I don't. Yeah, I mean, how come they're not to you? I mean, like, like, do you think femininity is really exactly like masculinity? No. I mean, you think the yin and the yang are equal? But, but you're confusing. No, I you're mean... You're confusing no. gender and ability. Because it's not about money. It's not about money. Really? Really. It's really. about romanticism. It's about well, love. When you, go about... To divorce, when you go into divorce court, yes. you start off with romance. Yes. You end up in divorce court. Yes. The romance is gone. It's all about money. But that's about the that's culture. True. That's about our no, culture no, no, in this I'm sorry. country because everything Everywhere is priceless. in the world. Family doesn't mean anything. It's all about money. It's all about oil. This is not about what you're talking about. A relationship between a man and a woman is half romance, half sexual, and it's half money. Yes. You have to grasp that concept. Yes. When, the, when it's over, yes. it's only about money. I just think that if men and women can learn to treat each other like peers, their problems would dissolve. That's what and, I was thinking that's, when that's I said, th so, when I said this, w this is actually the feminist agenda going back to, to the original days. That's, that's the kind of language that was The, the original used. feminist yeah. agenda, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. I, right. Gr I, grew up, I grew up thinking that women, I grew up in the 60s, I'm 52 years old, I grew up thinking that women are second class citizens because I saw it on Leave it to Beaver, I saw it on Andy of Mayberry, I saw it in my neighborhood. Um, I saw it in my school. I saw it everywhere. That's what society told me, that women are second-class citizens. And then as I evolved and went through graduate school, I started to realize that it isn't true hmm. and that almost everything I was taught was a bunch of baloney. Hmm. So I, I changed, and so now I treat women as peers, and I only accept women who want to be peers. And um, I appreciate your point about women being, you know, treated as equals. And I think at the point we are equal in the economic world, I think women would gladly take out men. But there are plenty of women, and I'm sure the women that you might invite out, that might not be able to reciprocate as easily in that way, taking you out to dinner. But I think as this woman tried to point out, is that women offer an insundry of different qualities to men and likewise men to women. There is not a woman here who can't afford to take a guy out to dinner. Not one. Right.
Thanks for watching. Like this video and subscribe.